Do not attempt to adjust your computer. There is nothing wrong. We are coming to you almost live in cyberspace from the cosmic compound, a place so secret. If we told you where it was, we'd have to kill you. Let's just say it is in the North American continent. This is the mothership as we fly through episode number seven, I believe. My name is Dobie Maxwell, a.k.a. the King of Uranus. To your left, to my right, the uber geek, the lovely and talented Greg DeGuire in here. Uh, getting ready to have some health issues taken care of. We're going to take care of that. To my left, the millennial falcon, the lovely and talented Carrie Turner. It's Ter Carrie Turner, yes. right? I, I, it's one of those things. Every where, episode now, I think every, it's going that way. Is it, did I get it right? <laughs> Okay, yes. got it right. And uh, we're glad you're here. Now, episode seven, what we're doing now, we're laying down some tracks, as we will. We were on the radio for, I believe, four and a half years on WLIP in Kenosha, Wisconsin, and now we're on our own. So we're kind of backtracking, popping the clutch, going down through the gears again. We're in second gear. we got a couple of things laid down. We just want to talk about some interesting things to get some things out there. Then we'll start bringing some of our guests back. I already have a line of guests. You didn't ask me to come back. The mothership was flying again, so we're thankful and thrilled that you are watching. However, you're doing it, if you're watching if you're listening. And uh, you guys have health problems, man. I do. As, uh, as far as guests go, I actually have a nurse lined up. Okay. So we can talk why it is that I'm falling apart. <laughs> well, now think about this, though. In, uh, Carrie, you're, you're young and coming up the ranks. Are you looking as old? It's like, okay, it's like my grandpa. It's already begun. I mean, I got my first kidney stone last month. Really? So, yes. Welcome to adult. You're not even an unofficial adult yet. In all states. Join the club. We've got jackets. <laughs> He's the king of kidney stones right there. We should actually auction them off. We should get like a little, like a little a nice. You know. That's a brilliant idea. I've got one in me right now that is large enough to be, there's a total blockage mm -hmm. in one of my tubes on the right side of my kidney. It's a block. I, now, I had a comedy club guy that I worked for, and every, pretty much every other month he was down with kidney stones. You are second most yep. prolific. Now, what they are, <coughs> not that we're having a medical parts show, but it, it is a, uh, a version of, what is it, the buildup? Calcium. Calcium deposits. Calcium, calcium deposits in the kidneys. Here's the thing, boys and girls. Here's what the medical world is finally piecing together. So, for those of you who are arthritic or have the potential to be arthritic, you also stand a high chance of getting the kidney stones. They're starting to put these two pieces together because it's all about bone density. So, my kidneys, for whatever reason, are drawing calcium from somewhere out of the bones, says me. That's why I am just kicking out stones left and right, and it makes sense because I do suffer from <coughs> debilitating arthritis. And I'm gonna the nurse that we're gonna have on the show not to put her on the spot, but mm -hmm. I've got to find out. And I don't think she's an arthritis expert, expert, but she certainly knows a lot about a lot of stuff, which makes her dangerous and interesting at the same time. Gout. That's the word I'm looking for. Gout right, is uh, a version yes. of the calcium buildup, and that's yeah, if you eat too one, much meat. Yeah. They call it, I think, the rich person's disease if you drink too much. Uh, milk yes. Yes. And eat too much meat. <laughs> No my problems. my version is too much meat and here here too much milk. Here's why too much meat because the body produces calciums in the stomach to break the meats down, or any fibrous food for that matter. But meat is high in fiber, so the body produces calcium to break these meats down so you can digest them properly. Some bodies, like myself, overproduce calcium for whatever reason. Again, that's connected to arthritis. Overproduce these calciums to break things down. Lickety split. So if I, the more eat I meat, now I'm just cranking out the calcium like they're not going to make it anymore. And that's what's causing me stones. So a normal person, they say, should drink anywhere from six to eight glasses of water. Mine should be at least triple that. And I'm sorry, I would drown in that water. We'll, I am not we'll be having mothership connection uh, catheters with the logo <laughs> face on it. Yeah. Uh, well, our buddy Al, the Al, we got the, the Al. So the Al is, uh, he's, he's got enough water. He's in there. And if it really gets sour, we're going to have a alien Al colostomy bags on sale in the gift shop. <laughs> and depends. Too, depends, with, yeah. Uh, with and now they call them man wipes. Have you seen these at the grocery store? No. Yeah, yeah. They're called man wipes. And they sell them in like camouflage packaging. Or no, dude wipes, it's man wipes or dude wipes. We know so what you're a dude for, that needs a wipe. We know what you're getting for kidney <laughs> I told you my ears, you're, you're a young lady and you got the first one. Did you know it, it was a kidney stone? Nope, because it was in my right side. And I kind of messaged my mom because both of my parents are very prone to get kidney stones. And I was like, what does it feel like? Genetic, and, that is. Yep, I believe it. And I just woke up one morning, went to the hospital. I was just, I was throwing up, feeling terrible. And then... Uh, yeah, it took them four hours to figure out that it was just kidney stones that already passed into my bladder. Oh, so you're you're free because they're talking about something the size of an anchovy. You know, yeah, that. mine is really small. That's close to the size that I have in me right now. A black olive. I'm on a drug right now called Flomax. <laughs> what that does is it <laughs> among other things. <laughs> among other things, that's going to expand 
the tube that's coming out of my kidney into the bladder. It's going to make that larger to help it uh, flush itself out of the arena, as they say. It's very scary. I had one one time. It's the most pain I've ever experienced. And they went to the, the hospital, and the nurse at the hospital said they've asked pregnant women who may have had children, what is worse, and it's a toss-up. Yep. Well, she saw me in pain. I was on vacation a couple of months ago. And we were just starting to get together and trying to lay some of the groundwork down for doing this particular <coughs> project. And I had to kick her out. It was <laughs> bad. It was pretty bad. I was so uncomfortable. I couldn't sit. I couldn't stand. I couldn't lay down. It was agonizing internal pain. And there is nothing that you can do to quell that. Well, you, you know? can't sleep. You can't stay awake. It's almost nope. like, uh, to me, the only pain I can equate it to is watching that Lord of the Rings movie. I mean, I, I, I could watch it, I could stay up, I sleep, I could do anything about it. Go around. Yeah, exactly. and, and then every, now everybody Googles itself. You get a little pain. My grandpa used to call it a fart stuck. You got a fart stuck somewhere. You're on Google self-diagnosing yourself. <laughs> then, okay, appendix is left. That could burst. You could die within five minutes. So you said yours is on the right side? Yeah. Mine was on the right side, too. Do you get them on both sides? Yes, both sides. Uh, but my, my this particular pain was on my left side and it wouldn't go away. So I knew it wasn't my appendix because it was on the wrong, it's on the wrong side. Appendix pains would be, uh, you know, lower and always on the right side. Now, I don't know about you. I drove myself to the insurance, or the insurance, yeah, to the, uh, I had no insurance. I drove myself to the emergency ward and they, uh, they give you the, the morphine shot. And I felt that, felt whole, great. that did feel great, but I still felt the pain over the morphine. Oh, so you know, you wow, know that, you. that's tough. Yeah, yep. I remember. Uh, I forgot they had me an IV of uh, Demerol years ago. They didn't even use that stuff nowadays. But then I remember being delirious in the hospital on the Demerol. I'm ready to go. I'm on a bikini still. That's awesome. You're gonna operate on a racehorse. You know, yeah, that's the yeah. stuff they're giving you. you know. Yeah. So now, what I want to bring up about this whole thing about genetics. You, you, you mentioned that. Now, again, talking about conspiracies, allegedly, whether the Anunnaki or some other race brought us here to cohabit this planet because whatever our planet of origin is exploded, is nuclearly polluted from a war, uh, was traded in a, in a big deal, cosmic deal, whatever it is that we're on this planet, our DNA supposedly is not ideally situated for this planet. That's why we have some of the illnesses that we do. Yes. Uh, or if you want to go that route, uh, as far as our creators, the Anunnaki came from a planet called Nibiru, better known as Planet X, which they say is still in some kind of elongated elliptical orbit in our particular solar system. Because they always say there's a planet they couldn't account for. And this Planet X might just be that planet. So the Anunnaki were bigger than us. Uh, the Bible says that there were giants among us called the Nephilim. So what these giants were doing is they were mining our planet for gold. Why? Because Nibiru was about to, their planet was gone to pop. So what they were doing is they were mining gold. So gold dust particles in their atmosphere would go back to recreating an ozone layer around their particular planet. So what's on every TV commercial nowadays? We buy gold. We buy your gold. I wonder why that is. Maybe the government's bought into this particular conspiracy because they always say there are holes in the what? Ozone. ozone. And what do you think might fix that? Gold dust particles. And I wonder where they got that idea from Any. Just it's all deep. things to think about. Now, now, to me, I think we are finally, now, 20 years ago when your hip surgery, probably, you wouldn't have had hip surgery, we'd no. probably be coming to you from a wheelchair. Yeah, uh, so the deal is, because because of my stone situation, it's all due to arthritis. Horrible, horrible arthritis. Now, because of that, I've already had total left hip replacement surgery. This one will be coming out within weeks as the air date of this show, which should be out by now. You're day hoping before. and I'm not dead already. <laughs> day before. The day before, yeah. So a hip should be coming up. All because of debilitating arthritis. All also because of how I was born. They say that this all happened during childbirth. That I must have been a rough get out. It was probably upside down, which explains uh, more than a million things. But I must have been a rough get out. Nowadays, they wouldn't give moms the option because it's always the baby first. They would have had, a, I should have been a cesarean section. None of this would have happened. I'd have been a typical weirdo instead of the debilitating arthritic weirdo. Debilitating arthritic. Well, I gotta write that down. <laughs> That's our band. If you're just joining us, what we do is when a sick subject comes up or an unusual grouping of word or one word, Greg writes it down as a potential band name. If you have a band and are aspiring in the music business, we'd like to take a look at our list for a nominal fee. Maybe buy us dinner and a hot lunch. Sorry, I had to quick write that down. So debilitating arthritic weirdo. <laughs> so, anyways, I was a, I was a rough kid. Yeah, yeah, or Yoko Ono album. Yoko, yeah, that too. So, uh, 
they they had to pinch me and squeeze me. They had to get the salad spoons to yank me <laughs> out. And in that moment of out, my hips were broken just at that instant in time. But it took 40 years for it to develop into this problem. Uh, now, I'm a big feller. The camera probably shows I'm not thin. But that was of no consequence. Whether if I was my ideal weight for my height and age, the same thing would have happened. This, this was destined at the moment of birth. I had zero choice in that. But now in the last, what did it say, maybe 20 years, since the, the turn of the 2000, the second, third millennium, how many millennia? Millennia. A few. 2000, right around there. Right. Technology has exploded, especially medical. My grandpa, I don't know if anybody in your family had a heart bypass. Mm -mm. My grandpa had one in the 1970s, and they gutted him like a fish. They cut him with a pizza cutter mm -hmm. from his ankle <laughs> to his Adam's apple, mm -hmm. and they peeled him open, and they broke his sternum, and they, I think it was a double or a triple bypass. Mm -hmm. And it just, I mean, and he, he it looked like a stitched up football. Yikes. Oh and and now they can go in a tweezer through your ear hole and they, just, <laughs> and they cauterize it or weld it or whatever they do. And just like with, with yours, I mean, could be a hip replacement? What is that? That's not even ear hole. Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so what years ago it used to be if you had hip replacement, they put some kind of metal rods. Yes. And you are out for at least three months before right. you can do anything. And it was, and it's, it sucked because every 10 years you had to go back and have the rod replaced. It's no good. When I had this hip replaced, it's pure, it's pure titanium. Like a golf club. Uh, like like, golf like club. a golf club. Uh -huh. So it's titanium. I was in the hospital for two days. Mm -hmm. uh, I was back to work. So I, the first week I was in a walker. Had to be done. Second week I was in crutches. Third week, almost nothing, but I had a cane with me just in case. And at the end of the third week and the fourth week, break dancing. No holds barred. <laughs> Yeah. Gymnastics. Yeah, gymnastics. <laughs> you do that that little Russian dance. Hey! The hip will last 20 years, give or take. Mm -hmm. So in 20 years, it has to be replaced. Now, the thing is, they don't want to do it to fellers my age because they have to do what they call the mortal or morbid man. So what kind of time have you got left? If they do this too early, mm -hmm. by the time you're too old, you've run out of options and you can no longer get another hip because then you're wheelchair bound. So when I'm 80... Unless technology changes, and I'm willing to bet it will, and I'll get to that in a second, I will be wheelchair bound. You'll be living, you, your head will be in a I'll jar. I'll be in a jar. Just like <laughs> yeah. that next just day. Like a, um, a future round. Yeah. Yeah. floating yeah. head. Yeah. Now, this hip that is due to come out, this is only a year, almost two years later. Right. This hip will probably last the rest, at least a solid 30 years now. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't even have to go to the hospital to get this thing out. It's going to be outpatient. Mm -hmm. My surgery is scheduled for 9 a.m. I should be home between 5 and 6. Wow. I'm walking the same day. Right. Just That's like, amazing. It is just amazing. Like that. Wow. Oh, the, the knees? What else? I mean, Knees are a little bit trickier. Knees, they can't do... They still have to do those at the hospital because your recovery time is a lot longer. Because you're putting more weight. It's all about weight adjustment. So your knees have to bear the load. Mm -hmm. Hips, eh, not as much as you might think. Knees are worse. Hips, I, if you're going to have to have... Knee or hip surgery, pray you have to have hip surgery. Knee surgery is the worst. Some people don't even recover 100% after knee surgery. They get a constant cracking or they always have to put ice on them perpetually. Knees are a sticky wicket. Hips. Oh, uh, another good conspiracy, they're cloning. Clones yes. of Dr. Funkenstein. It's yes. an album by George Clinton. Right after the one, coincidentally, the Mothership Connection with the show is named after it. I heard, about, heard that song when I was a kid in high school, What is a Clone? And I couldn't just Google it because I had to go to the library and look it up. And that's a very interesting concept. It is reproduction without intercourse. Right. Now, if they did that with me, and yes. which hospitals have plenty of my blood nowadays and tissue samples, what have you, mm -hmm. my clone in 40 years would have hip problems mm -hmm. because it would be my exact DNA. It would have the exact the same, same flaw. Clone, the same flaws. Mm -hmm. So that is what it is. And cloning isn't as odd as you might think. All they're doing is they're taking, so they're taking the egg and the sperm, and they're creating it genetically in a lab to match the certain blood types, the specific genomes, the DNA, they're putting it. And you can you can give birth to clones through a female. You don't necessarily need a lab. You put them in a human, and you can come out with another meat. Now, is it uh, clones? All, are they babies? Well, or sure they are. They don't, they don't come out I, I think, adults? Yeah. No, but now you can have genetic predisposition. So if you want the kid to have, uh, to be tall, you can pull from specific gene pools to have very specific traits. So the NFL has got... So, yeah, if you want to have, if you want to clone the 65 Green Bay Packers, if you really wanted to, or the Steelers from the 70s, or any baseball team that was in a dynasty year, and you want to clone anyone from the Yankees, 
go for it. It mm -hmm. should theoretically be able to be done. All you need is blood and a little bit of tissue sample with, from whatever's left, and there you have it. But whatever they had, whatever flaws they had, they're going to have the same flaws. It doesn't stop anything. Or make, clones don't make it better, just making an exact duplicate. The big question, and I don't, ever, I don't think I've ever heard an answer to my satisfaction, do clones have souls? Why wouldn't they? I don't know. Depends, kind of clone. depends on your religious background. Mm -hmm. A human is a human is a human. As they say, mm -hmm. a rose by any other name would not smell just as sweet. Back in the days when copy machines would make copies at work before you clone your butt on it, like most people did. <laughs> But you, point. You, you would you would clone something and it'll be a little less quality. And than you would know, yeah, yeah. Gee, this this can't be the original. Copy the fourth, stuff. fifth, sixth generation, yeah. it looks like Chinese after a while. I don't know. I, I guess it depends on how far you're willing to go with with clone technology, and it also depends on the sample that you have. As long as the sample hasn't been corroded somehow, some way, every clone that you make should be an exact duplicate, unless mm -hmm. the sample gets frozen or refrigerated or fried instead of baked, whatever. If something degrades the sample, then yeah, you'll have a he'll have half his face missing. Jeff or Goldblum missing. and the fly. Yes. That was the, the remake. Yeah, yeah. The other one too, so same thing, a little imperfection in there. Yep. <laughs> well the imperfections unfortunately go too far a long way. Now the Anunnaki, as far as clones go, that's why if you've ever noticed there's there's only a few different specific body types in in faces. Like you can always if you can go to the different part of the country, hey that guy looks familiar. And why do you think that is? Even though you know you never met that guy. But geez, he looks like the guy, I swear, they could be brothers. You always meet somebody. Hey, man, do you know you got a twin brother or a twin sister somewhere? <laughs> I, was in, I was in Vegas gambling my face off, and I swear I met your twin sister. How do you figure that is? I don't know. Bone structure? Because Ethnicity. the people who made us, the Anunnaki, of which, by the way, when they were mining for gold, got sick and tired of this planet because the atmosphere didn't agree with them. So... They made us to be their miners and workers and such. So they pooled from their genetics to create us. And they only had the same thing, a few different specific body types. So there's only so much they could do. Obviously, that was, well, depending on which way you want to go with that, close to 7,000 years ago, probably more than that. That's the biblical version. It's a biblical version. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so now we've just evolved into what we are today. Okay, let's stop that. Now, did you go to church in yeah. as a kid? Okay. Are you from, uh, uh, I'm yeah. not, I don't judge. What did I, did you, were you a Bible reader? Um, no, not necessarily. Okay. <laughs> no, I was just, I don't even know what denomination it was. Just Christian. I, uh, evangelical, I think, gotcha. is what my parents grew up on. The point is, I was forced church as a kid, good or bad, right or wrong. I read the Bible several times through in my teen years. Yeah. And it's, it's fascinating. Again, I don't judge anybody what you think or don't think. It's, not, it's what you think or don't think. But the whole thing about the alien, uh, the, the snake, the serpent. Mm -hmm. And now as I get older and you hear about the, the races of aliens that are the... Mm -hmm. Serpent, snake, yeah. reptiles, mm -hmm. kind of thing. So the the devil thing is that you know, it, so you, they were talking to a physical snake that we're meant to believe. Reptilians, reptilian, right. re reptilians. So the reptilians. So the Anunnaki are mixed with the reptilians. Well, the Anunnaki were just like taller, bigger people. So they're around ten feet tall. So the Adam and Eve, quote unquote, if you believe that, there had to be more of them. You couldn't just start from two people. So Adam people. and Eve were the first two clones. The first boy clone was Adam. The first female clone was Eve. Mm -hmm depending on which way you want to go. So anyone out there who wants to do a little bit more research on this particular subject, Zechariah Sitchin, uh, mm -hmm. there were gods among us. He's got like six or seven books. I've got three or four upstairs. Fascinating reads. Either this guy was a genius or a certifiable wacko. I don't know. There was a church, and you can look at this. It's called the Southwest Radio Church. And my grandmother, who was as stodgy as could be, would listen to the broadcasts of the Southwest Radio Church out of, I believe it was Tulsa or Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. This is back in the 70s. And talked about Zachariah Sitchin and his books. And it's so out there. And, and my grandma was fascinated by it. And her someone that's, it's, she was a Catholic for yep. until like 58 years. Oh. And she decided she was going to try to every other church. She went to all the Holy Rollers churches and the stuff turned around. But that, that guy was fascinated. Zachariah Sitchin, he was a, a critically acclaimed professor. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't some wackadoo who come up with these wild theories. He tried to disseminate ancient Sumeria, which is where most of his theories are based on. But as it turns out, their language is pretty hard to decipher. But they wrote everything down. They were they're generally known as one of the first societies on the planet Earth. So they were around before uh, so the Sumerians, and there was the Babylonians, uh, and there was a, a 
whatever ancient society you want to come up with, the Sumerians always outdated them. So the story of, of Noah and the Ark, the Sumerians had a very similar story. Most Bible stories go back to stories from ancient Sumeria. That's just so everyone got their story from somewhere. So is the Bible telling the story of ancient Sumerians, or who got whom from what? Uh, the Noah's tale is called the Epic Tale of Gilgamesh. This is the ancient Sumerian story of building the ark. So where the hell did the Bible get it from? They stole material, like comedians stole material. <laughs> uh, Easter in itself is not an original story. I call that the Spicoli theory. Anybody see Fast Times at Ridgemont High? So Jeff Spicoli okay. in history class called Mr. Hand a dick, right? So by the time lunchtime comes around, it's he threatened Mr. Hand's life and pulled a knife on him. That was only between, that was between four hours. He calls Mr. Hand a name, and then, wow, did you hear Spicoli threaten his life? Yeah, boy, that didn't take long for that story to get out of control. Well, what's to say that that didn't happen with biblical stories? Most, when they put the Bible together, it was 325 A.D. at the Council of Nicaea, or Nicaea, I'm not, sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Anywho, that was 325 years after year zero. You want to tell me you remember the exact same story for 300 years? I can't remember what I had for lunch yesterday. How is that possible? Who wrote it down? Who brought, okay, here, here's, I've got all the commandments and stories here. Let's, uh, let's go through. Here, you know what, let's take chapters one through three. Chapter four, toss. That didn't really happen. Well, how do you know the other chapters happened? Oh. <laughs> We're leaving it in. Yeah, I mean, why not? But then there are the supposed uh, gospels that got left out, uh, the Gnostic gospels. Uh, the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, yeah. all these other, all That's these other types of the Gospel. Gospel. The Gospel. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a bunch of those. Who's who gave the thumbs up and the thumbs down? The final cut. Well, it was all uh, the, the Holy Roman Romans. Uh, That's why the they Roman had a lot of. That's why they had a lot of dates changed to coincide. So if we're going to have this as a religion, see, we've got this other ceremony around about the end of December. It's a pagan ritual that most of our people like. But you new religious people, you want to have your holiday too. I'll tell you what, let's merge them together. So we'll say your fellow was born that day, coincides with our day, with the, with, the, with the turning of the solstice. Let's just make that a holiday. Everybody happy? And it's a holiday. That's how it happened. Kind of like today. Yep. Well, even, even, the way, even the whole thing with, uh, with Jesus himself, who's to say if he really ever existed? Even his crucifixion, which Easter is the big holiday of the crucifixion. And I never understood why Easter wasn't a bigger holiday than Christmas. It should be a way bigger deal. I mean, if you, if you think about it. Coming back from the dead? Coming back from the dead's a pretty big deal. Or was he ever dead? Asks me. So the thing is, it's put up on the cross. Jesus was always depicting as wearing what color? White. White. Why? Purity. Maybe, but... There was a specific sect. It was before Labor Day. Before Labor Day. Yeah, no white after Labor Day. There was a specific sect of Jewish society called the Essenes. The Essenes were always wearing white because they were the helpers of society. They were the nurses and doctors, the healers. They were called the Essenes. Jesus, it was supposed that he was one of these healers. So he was always depicted in white. Which nowadays is why the good guy always wear white, or nurses wear white, or there's a white circle and a red cross goes all the way back to those days. That's how that started. Good guys wearing white went back to the Essenes, of which Jesus was supposedly a part of. Now, if that were the case, so if he's nailed up on the cross, then you have uh, the Roman the Roman guard. Uh, was it uh, Longinus was the guy who stuck him, but there was another Roman guard who put a sponge on a stick. It says here... The, sour wine, yeah, the, bitter yeah, wine. Yeah, well, the thing is, what if that was an early form of chloroform? Here you go, buddy. Oh, yeah. uh, look at he's, he's a goner. Go ahead, bring him down. Not really dead, me. Let's stick him in the cave. Well, whose cave was he buried in? Who's, whose property? He was buried on Joseph of Arimathea's property. Joseph of Arimathea was Jesus' uncle. Hmm. So if you're going to be buried in the family plot, don't you think you have some control over that part of land? Now, I heard a rumor, and I don't remember where I heard this, I studied the Bible bits and pieces of years, that Joseph of Arimathea was black. It's a possibility. I mean, who really knows? I don't think Jesus is the lily white picture that we all <laughs> see. And the picture no. almost effeminate that no one yeah, knows. No, right? no, that, yeah. That's not Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the thing is. I think so, you're more like Danny DeVito. I'll buy that. I'll buy that. An angry short penguin stocky. little fella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> short stocky. <laughs> 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 a real person. Yeah, exactly. 
So if the studio audience has a giggle at that one, thank you, studio <laughs> audience. <laughs> so three days later, he comes out of the cave, rejoiced, for he has risen. But perhaps he was never dead in the first place. Rumor has it, if Jesus did exist, so Mary Magdalene was probably his wife. They were seen kissing that was left out of the Gospels. It was in the Gospel of Mary Magdalene. What is it, TMZ now? Well, yeah. Well, yeah. So the paparazzi. The disciples. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus yeah. and Mary sitting in the tree. K-I-S-S-I-M-Z. First comes love, then comes Mary, then comes... Little baby Sarah. In a baby carriage. That was their child's name, Sarah. Sarah and Mary Magdalene fled after the crucifixion to the south of France and married into the line of royalty called the Merovingian kings. So that was the royal bloodline of Christ that married into the kings of Europe. Uh, so actually, Merovingian, you're going you're gonna to love this, Carolina is a derivative of the name Merovingian, or actually of Charlemagne. Charlemagne was one of the Merovingian kings. So all these names go all the way across the board. So Sarah may, marries into the Merovingian kings, so they say that maybe Jesus' bloodline still exists to this day. Now, so what happened to the big cheese himself? They say if he did exist, the Romans weren't done persecuting the Jews after he supposedly died. They drove the Jews to a specific rock, uh, a plateau called Masada. Very famous. Peter O'Toole was in a movie called Masada, made for TV, a good movie. So the Jews had their last stand on Masada where the Romans wiped them out. That's most likely where Jesus actually died by the hand of Roman soldiers defending his people. Theories, not my specific okay, theories. Okay, we're probably things getting, I've read about. That's why we can't tell you the location of the cosmic right, compound right. here because people would be. And it's amazing yeah. to me. Again, I, I want to be as upfront as, as possible because as a kid, I was forced church. Most of us are. You are a product of your parents or mm -hmm. non-parents, church or non-church, religious experience or non-religious experience. My grandfather, who was the wisest person I've ever met, said, go, go now. I was nine, ten years old. Go to the church now. Go explore all of it. It's all BS. There's no pie in the sky. <laughs> You're a smart kid. You're going to wake up and say, this is this, none of this is true. Yeah. And I wanted to, you know, bathe him in holy water. <laughs> and, and one day I woke up and, and years after he had passed, and I, I don't believe any of it. And again, people just get so defensive. How can I you do. say that? And you're wrong. And I think the only thing, that, the only acceptable answer that I will accept from anyone is, we don't know. We don't know. Yeah. yeah. I That's could be the dead. only answer. I'm Everything gonna... I just said could be absolute dead wrong. But... It's neat theories. And again, not my personal theories. I've, I have a lot of books in the library upstairs. I've read a lot of things, and those make sense to me, but that doesn't mean it happened that way. I think it's just interesting. I don't think there's anything wrong to question, but question no. respectfully. Why sure. is this happening? You don't believe it? And some people, I mean, look at the holy wars. Oh, my gosh. The, uh, how many Muslims are there in the, in the world? Billions? Yeah. Of, of yeah. Seven billion people? Yeah. Have, Three billion Muslims. Yeah. Well, how trying, many, to make, trying to make a joke about Allah and see how far it goes. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the Crusades. I mean, that's another thing. They were all there to defend the Holy Land, and the Muslims eventually won. They built the Dome of the Rock on top of the Holy, uh, the Holy Sepulcher. That's the church where Jesus was crucified. Well, they did. The Dome of the Rock was on top of uh, was on top of the uh, King Solomon's Temple. Mm -hmm. So there is a church called the Church of the Holy Sepulcher. It's a church built on top of the, of the land of the plateau where Jesus was crucified. That's still there today. But you can't get into Solomon's Temple now because that's a strict Muslim temple. So you cannot get in there today. Only Muslims can. Hmm. It's wacky. It is it's wacky and it's crazy. And there has to be some truth to it. Now, is, is there proof in your readings? Well, where there's smoke, there's fire. So who's to say? Who's to say? Yeah. Well, if you have any comments, we are reachable and available. This far. could have, we didn't intend to go this way, but hopefully we'll light up some uh, some cyberspace with you. We are uh, online. Yes. Uh, yeah. Facebook page. Yes, uh, the Mothership. Or you Facebook. can find us at Gregory DeGuire, and through there you can find the Mothership Connection fan page, yep. or you can email us. Uh, you can e email me at alienxfile at wi dot rr dot com or wlip mothership at live dot com. Any books that you'd like to recommend, I'm sure Greg or Carrie or I will read them. If you want to wish Greg a get well soon, please do that because he's going to be sitting for a while to have some downtime. I will have lots of time to read lots more bizarre things. <laughs> and Carrie will be turning 21 soon, so start some bathtub gin. <laughs> if she's legal, we're going to get, <laughs> get a buzz going for her. I can't wait. <laughs> We've also got a tinfoil hat coming. We'll probably have that the next episode. So We appreciate you listening to Mothership Landing for now. We will talk to you soon. King of Uranus is out.